Hey guys, t -Bull here. Today we're going to be talking about how to make your opponent irrelevant to the outcome of the match. Here's my cow on the screen here. Those of you that watched my pick a premium Otago video from about a week ago might remember I said I was trying out a different build. Well, here's the build. My traditional Makawa build, which I haven't played with a lot lately because I've been using the Azura Lane Togo Commander usually on the Japanese cruisers. But my traditional Makawa build from back in the day was Norm Scott and uh, Swirsky. So double concealment if you factor in Makawa's base trade, plus a little bit of accuracy on the guns. Here we're kind of playing with the same philosophy. Instead of Swirsky, we're putting Kuznetsov on there, which adds range to the guns. Now, essentially the gap between the blue and the white rings stays roughly the same under those two setups. The difference is under the Kuznetsov build, the white ring extends further out, and the blue one does as well. So you can't get quite as close to enemy ships without being detected, but you can reach out and counter them more effectively at range. So that's kind of the difference of the build. I also put on Von Mueller... Trying out his speed boost on this one, just going for the ultimate speed. Uh, and we'll see this particular game, you know, we're going to be getting over 40 knots, I believe, in the Otago whenever we get it up to full speed. And that's pretty dang fast for a cruiser. So you got to be aware of the possibility when playing against the Otago that it does have uh, really good potential speed. All right, jumping into this game, we got Tears of the Desert domination mode. We're on the A spawn here. Note, no destroyers. And that's going to cause me to at least see what I can get away with here on this opening move. This is a very aggressive play. You wouldn't normally want to take a cruiser in this position on the opening uh, play, you know, if there's enemy destroyers there because they're likely to spot you as you're coming around this little gap here. And because the island's behind us, you know, the one that's to the right of our ship, not currently pictured on the screen, but they're on the right-hand side. We can't disengage if we got spotted and they started shooting at us. We couldn't immediately turn off and uh, flee and protect ourselves from that way. If we did, we'd accidentally beach on the island, and then we'd be really toast. So we're still excellent concealment on the Otago, even though we spec for it differently with this build. And that allows us to kind of spot for these guys. We're using this ship's really strong concealment to spot, kind of perform... A quasi destroyer role here spotting I'm trying to get my team involved over here at least get them shooting Wichita pops up though and he's close enough he's broadside and we did have AP loaded so we're gonna go ahead and take some shots at him now Wichita most of you guys know by now that's kind of a notoriously hard ship to remove even though we're gonna have a couple juicy salvos here and there uh, this is one of them it's still gonna take you know five six seven eight salvos whatever it is to kill this thing and that is quite a bit of time but you'll note we're doing our classic move the kiting away from the enemy cruisers we want to be sailing away from the enemies that we're fighting in general uh, Japanese cruisers that's particularly true it's called kiting this video is going to be all about kiting this is the standard kiting play right here where we're just sailing away from them but there's an additional layer to the tactic that we're going to see develop as the course of the game goes on here. You can do it in cruisers, you can do it in battleships, you can technically do it in destroyers. Basically, once you start getting the enemy ships to chase you uh, and they commit to really trying to deal with you, you can lead them away from the relevant parts of the map. So you're kind of like the Pied Piper of irrelevance, <laughs> if you want to think of it that way. But it's quite a powerful move. Basically, if you're looking at the map here and what's going on in the game, until we killed that Wichita, uh, which by the way, it was a 31,000 to zero HP trade. So a pretty effective trade there. But prior to that kill, they had a four to three advantage over here. Now they're gonna keep and maintain a one ship advantage over on this side. So because they have a numerical advantage over here, that means they're weak on other parts of the map. And you can see our team's kind of overloading on C. So basically, when we're on a side where the enemy has a numerical advantage over us, our main goal should be to slow them down, stay alive as long as possible, harass them, uh, see if we can deal some damage, see what happens. But we want to give the side of the map that ha our team has the numerical advantage on, i.e. in this or e.g. in this case, uh, C. You know, we want to give that team over there 
time to get the job done. Now, sometimes it's going to be frustrating because your team's going to be very passive, not recognize that they have an overload situation or not understand that they need to be aggressive when they have an overload situation. Those are both very common occurrences. But nevertheless, that's all you can really do because we can very rarely win, you know, situations where we're going to be outnumbered. Now, we are going to win this side over here, but you can, you're can you going to see it's going to take the entire uh, length of the match. So you want to be very patient when you're uh, playing in a numerically disadvantaged situation, and uh, you don't want to be taking wicked selves like that, uh, offering up a little bit too much side for the enemy to shoot at there. So that's kind of dangerous here. The Otago, you can see here when we're steeply angled, yes, we'll take a little bit of damage here and there, but we're protecting our citadel when we're steeply angled. So this, along with most of the Japanese cruisers, a lot of cruisers, you can protect the Citadel just by steeply angling it. Uh, it's when you start flashing a little bit too much side, that's when you bring uh, the potential for big damage coming your way into play. So anyway, evaluating the map, we got advantages on sea. They're slowly gaining uh, traction over there. Red has two guys sitting in their base. Blue has one guy rushing them up the gut. You know, those players really aren't having that much of an impact and again we have a three to two advantage over here in favor of red but you'll note they don't have control of a now we don't have control of c either but conceptually what you want to be doing on domination mode is you know figure out which cap you're going to be trying to flip or capture and then actually do that and what's going to be happening here is we're going to be frustrated enough for these guys that they're going to lose focus and they're going to sail right through A, even though one of them is actually going to be on A. But because we're going to be causing so many headaches for these guys, they're going to say, okay, we got to deal with this guy and we got to deal with the other ships that are causing us problems here. They're not going to capture the objective. Meanwhile, our team, as time goes on, will wrap up the flank on C. They will capture that and then they'll begin to accrue points that way. That's how we're going to get in a score advantage. Once your team gets a score advantage, it limits the enemy's options. Uh, take a look on the map though. There's a lot of times if we saw someone on our team positioned where we are right now, we'd be kind of laughing at them saying they're parked on the moon. What are they doing? What we're trying to do though is we're basically trying to keep it in terms of the distance. We want to have one ship on this uh, red flank over here that we can really engage in or engage with at any time. And then we want to limit the amount of ships on their team that can shoot us. So I'm trying to stay away from the other two ships further back there as much as possible. Kutuzov should be able to hit me. I think the other ship, whatever it is, should probably be able to hit me as well. But we're not trying to be, sp I'm not spreading the love around. I'm mainly just trying to focus on shooting one ship at a time. Uh, that way the other two ships don't start to think to themselves, oh, this guy's annoying, we got to get rid of him. We just want one ship at a time doing that. But because... The Kutazaz is moving forward here, and because, well, that ship was burning, so we kind of figured he was going to die anyways. But in terms of our arm wrangling as well, to continue to engage that battleship, we'd have to get uh, more broadside exposed to the Kutazov and whatever that other battleship is to the left, because we'd have to over-angle our ship to get all the guns in there, and that would cause problems. So we, there were numerous reasons why we switched over to this Kutuzov, but he is a relatively fast ship. He does have great range. He should be able to outrange us. Uh, so we're basically going balls to the wall, uh, full speed here at this point in time. Prior to that, we've been kind of inching forward, going quarter speed, half speed, maybe kicking it up a little bit here and there if people start really focusing on us. Once they drop uh, focus on us and go someone else, we slow back down again. We don't want to get too far away from these guys. So, again, looking on the map, you might say, wow, irrelevant positioning. But in reality, we've drawn what began as a four-ship red flank over here past the cap. And you can see they've now sailed through A. They've kind of forgotten about that. We're capturing C. And now we're going to be in a position to start flanking those guys that are sitting in the base. Then those guys are going to have time to come over here and help us resolve this. So, again... Defensive play, you know, if you're on the kiting side, the overmatch side in terms of numerical superiority, you're the defensive side of the match. Slow them down. That's all we're trying to do. We're whittling them down. We're doing a pretty good job. We got 100k damage, uh, you know, about two and a half times our ship's HP so far. And uh, we got a couple kills, so pretty effective. Very frustrating to play against. What you want to be doing is recognizing when an enemy does this to you and just let them get away. A lot of times when players are kiting away from you, 
they're not doing it intentionally. They're just kind of running because <laughs> they're terrified. Uh, that's a different, that's inadvertently using the uh, strategy. You really don't want to fall into the trap when they're inadvertently doing it because you make someone who's trying to, you know, in their mind, they're making incorrect plays, like running away terrified is not normally a good play in terms of strategy, but they're pulling you alongside it. And again, we had four ships that we really pulled past A over here through the course of this match. And just being one ship, being able to do that, you know, that's a disproportionate impact on the match. So even if the ships are doing it on purpose or mistakenly, it doesn't matter. Don't follow them into Timbuktu, into irrelevance like these guys are doing here. Let them go. For, you know, number one, don't sail past the objectives. That's a major problem uh, that they didn't need to fall into that trap. But, um, you know, if you do that, just let these ships go. A lot of times it'll take them a while to figure out that they're no longer being followed, and then they'll have to figure out how to get back into relevance. People like me that play a lot of kiting cruiser styles, you've got a much better feel for, okay, these guys are no longer really paying enough attention to me. I gotta either use my concealment to reposition or just kind of sail back at them and start harassing them until they uh, give us attention again and then go back to kiting away. So the timing on the play is a little bit difficult for the player doing it if they're not that familiar with the tactic. But I guess the, the moral of the story is don't fall for this. You can see how effective it is. Again, we took their strong side and we kind of whittled them down one by one and we prevented them from scoring you know the one cap that they should have had a really good chance to get right off the bat they didn't get and now we have three caps to zero and this game's all but wrapped up i'm not going to take all the credit you know this team played pretty well as a whole over here they did what needed to be done all across the map but you know we were definitely playing an important part in this game uh deploying this strategy so hopefully that helps you guys out if you did like the video please hit the thumbs up New to the channel? Well, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you guys. And we'll see y'all later. Peace.